right. Uh, the week after that, the 13th and 14th, we got Che Long and Shady Nitrous. Uh, the 20th and 21st, we have Dr. Cool, J. Clang, and Riley Rocket. And then on the 27th, we have uh, J. George. And on the 28th, we have Willard and Alexander Crowley. Um, so, all month long interviews from Wrestling Wit. Um, Go to our, uh, our Twitter page at WrestleE for more information on uh, all of that. Alright, I think we're done uh, putting ourselves over the right click up. Okay. We should keep going. Let's keep going for last time, brother. <laughs> and it's a great day for wrestling because we're all wrestling with the news. Um, I think maybe the biggest news coming out of this week is that um, William Regal, whether or not his contract is up, um, he's living in AEW. Uh, it seemed blatantly obvious last week, and I just feel like this week was a little bit more redundant in that aspect. Uh, but what are your thoughts on William Regal leaving AEW for WWE? Um, well, they all got to come home at some point, right? It's, it's weird because, I mean, it's Triple H bringing back his guys, right? Uh, and that's what it is. And everyone knew William Regal was like, if Shawn Michaels was the, the left, William Regal was the right. So it only made sense. So it's called the uh, Triple H... Uh, what's it? Oh, it, it does make the question, if AEW did a better job with William Regal, would there have been any potential of him actually staying with AEW? Like, these guys, you know, they're using me, they're respecting me. All we really know from William Regal in his time of AEW was his on-camera role. And while, yes, it was great shit, um, William Regal's the kind of guy you want backstage, I feel. You know, mentoring your guys, getting new guys, putting other guys over in a, a different capacity. If... You know, we're just playing spectating here. Um, could have AEW done anything to save William Regal? AEW culture, right? One, we're gonna change the. You're breaking up. We're gonna go back to a culture he knew. We're rolling through that signal. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. There you go. So, AEW, the culture is the culture, right? So, it wasn't like he was going to change it. So, why not go back to something he was more comfortable with anyway, with the backstage psychology role person? And I think that's what. AEW is going to miss more than the, the on character part because I think William Regal is done with being a character. I think he just wants to do the backstage stuff. I agree. And, you know, as much as I love seeing William Regal on my TV, um, you know, him promoting the next generation of wrestlers is more important, right? Always giving back to the business. Isn't that worth the name of the game? Yes, that is the place. Um, another guy, um, on Thursday, uh, Eric Young was stabbed to death by Cody Dino. Uh, so that means he's definitely coming back to WWE, right? Uh, sanity reunion, maybe? Well, they would have to get the bear-looking guy back. 
and um, the wolf named guy back. And then, uh, yeah, I guess Sanity. Yeah. yeah. Alexander. Yeah. But then Ducroft does a line because Wolf was a part of Imperium, and do you put him back with Imperium, or do you put him back with um, Sanity? Does anybody care about Sanity in 2022? I think they'll probably care about Eric Young, Sanity, not so much. Well, I feel like Eric Young is definitely, you know, uh, what's the word? Uh, underrated uh, in his work. And he's been doing great shit in Impact. But just because you do great shit in Impact, that doesn't necessarily mean that it would translate to something doing great shit in WWE. Depending on how they book him, do you see Eric Young being uh, anything significant in WWE, or is he running for the 24-7 championship again? Um, it just depends, because the way we, we consider booking is booking shows rather than making sure that the character is important. I mean, that's more important than trying to be over, right? Making sure that the character plays a part uh, in the ongoing stories. I think we're going to get the, um, the funny Eric Young or the serious I just got stabbed Eric Young. Depends. If they put him with Brain, it might be serious. Mm. You think that they, they put him with Brain? I would think he would need to be under some tutelage, right? Especially if he's coming back. Hmm. Well, uh, definitely gotta hand it to Impact for <laughs> killing another one of their superstars off. <laughs> Seems to be a, a trend in uh, some degree. Alright, um. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat had uh, his return match. Uh, he teamed with um, FTR to take on Jay Lethal uh, and uh, Brick Anderson, Rock Anderson, uh, and another guy that I don't remember. Um, I'm curious, did you see the match? I didn't see the match. I didn't, but I would pray that he's uh, he's good because he's the one guy who hasn't been wrestling every week and actually kind of like stayed out of the background so his body is not as bad. So if anything, it's ring rust. But I, I think he'll be okay. I think that there's a potential for uh an AEW debut or a return to WWE for, you know, that one more match with the Dragon? Or was this maybe just a one-time money grab by the Dragon? I think it's one time because when you think his last match, it was Jericho. Jericho, that match, with Jer that was the last one. Mm -hmm. All roads point to WWE. If you had your last match in WWE, that's your last match. I don't care. Who can say what? That was your last match. Well, well uh, I think Rick Flair would make the difference, but um, then again, he's thinking about having a one more <laughs> last match. <laughs> the last match to the last match. The last match, part two. He's starting to get Terry Funkish. <laughs> um, yep, yep. Well, my thing is, you know, if he's able to do it, the dragon, not with the... With the obviously, so that he can't do it anymore. Um, if the dragon 
so can do it because he's physically able. Could put some guys over. Still look good. Then you know why not have a couple matches? You know, so you still got it. You're still you know up there. You're still the dragon. It's just you know, <clears throat> it doesn't. It's just when to the point when it gets sad is the time when it should stop, right? It should never. Get yeah, started. but I would have thought. I mean, I would have thought, like, if they had attacked his son or something, then he would come in. It, it had to be something like a meaning for him to come back, right? That's why I would, like, when I want to see old wrestlers come back, I want to see them come back because they got cornered in the no other choice of, like, coming back. Well, I believe his son doesn't look for anymore. I know. That's why I said I wish it was more with his son than... I'm just coming back. Well, uh, speaking of another return, uh, this Friday, well, yesterday, um, Tegan Knox made her return to WWE TV on SmackDown. The only thing I can really say about Tegan is protect those knees, girl. Kaliko? Man, you're in line. I swear, like, ACLs, man, but it, it's weird. It's just, she tore both them bad boys. I'm trying to figure out how. And it's, it's a bad string of luck, so she's she going to be stone cold Steve Austin and with those knee braces. You know, when she first came to WWE, they had high, high hopes for this girl. And obviously she got injured. And then it was, she came back, they had higher hopes, she got injured again. Um, and then after that, things just kind of soured on her to where she was a mid-card goal. Does Tegan Knox add any value to WWE, or is he going to fall to the wayside once again? If it was Vince, fall to the wayside. If it's Triple H, they're gonna, I think they're going to give her a little time to build herself up, right? To, to show the dependability and the availability. Then she'll be a solid mid card upper card type of girl. So we'll see where it goes. But and first let's see how she does with the knee. That's, that's the first thing. Right. Obviously you're, you're starting her off in a wait and see type scenario because you want to wait and see if she she is, and I don't want to say this about anybody, if she's injury prone. Um... But could you trust the Keegan Knox for a title? Would you believe her as your your women's champion? Uh, built up over a year, why not? Well, I mean, I mean keep in mind the quick the quickest the quickest way for her to get that credibility is either winning the Royal Rumble or Money in the Bank. If they really had that much of a high hope for her, right? Well, I mean, you said you know. If it was Vince, she'd just fall to the wayside. Uh, with the with Triple H in charge, you know, there might be some, you know, chance of her getting up there. But you do realize that she was a part of NXT, which was primarily ran by Triple H at that time. And that's the scenario of her falling to the wayside is exactly what happened during the Triple H NXT regime. So, I mean, what are you, what does Triple H have to see in her this time around to say, oh, she's not going to fall to the wayside. It's going to be okay this time. I personally wouldn't see it, but do you see something else there? First, let's be happy she is able to get back in the ring, and then... 
will worry about that. Give her a couple matches with like an Emma or a Dana Brooke to, to test it out. And, you know, because that's what we care about. And plus her getting out of her own head. Right. Do you feel like the women's roster on Raw is maybe stronger than the women's roster on SmackDown? You can make that argument, but I think when Charlotte comes back to SmackDown, kind of balances. Because I don't count Bailey or Damage Control as Raw. I just consider them tweeners. But right. that's where I think the balance comes from. But if you're thinking girl for girl without Damage Control, yeah, Raw's not stronger. And I mean, obviously, me again adds to that. Because Mia Yim's a big get. She obviously knows what she's doing in there. And you could put a title on her and nobody would be surprised. Um, then you have the girls that came back for SmackDown. Um, Emma and... Um, uh, Emma. And I don't feel... And obviously Tegan. I don't feel like that balances the scales having those two girls there. Obviously, when Charlotte it comes back, she's going to run that town, but then again, when has she not? True, but I also think Emma coming back to me is a bigger deal, because you know how I am. I ride or die with Emma, baby. Yes. Ride or die. Alright, um, on to another piece of news. Uh, Bobby Roode revealed that he had neck infusion surgery. Um, obviously, he's not going to be around for a while. And could that must I'm not saying any injury is good, but could that necessarily be a good thing for his career? Because when he comes back, you know, it's he could kind of be the Bobby Roode we got in NXT. Um, well, we got to see how the neck is, right? Because when I think neck fusion, I think Kurt Angle, and we see how that goes. So let's just make sure that it's okay long term than anything. But, I mean, I don't think we'll ever get, I mean, unless Triple H wants to use this time, him being off to have him come back as that Bobby Roode, I don't see it happening. Yes, you uh, yes, Kurt Angle, that confusion surgery, also adds some cold, um, uh, Paige all had infusion surgery on them, and Sting, and, you know, they were able to come back to the ring, so, I mean, I would have hopes that he would be able to come back to the ring, I don't think that would be the issue. But you kind of feel like it might be time to call it for Bobby. <laughs> Alright. Uh, another guy that might be out for a while, um, Randy Orton. Oh. Could we see Randy Orton back in the ring, or... Is it maybe time for him to hang it up? Did we lose Coleco? Was Coleco here to begin with? Yep. For me. Yes. Never than none of me. I'll take it. <laughs> So I mean, I'm here twice. My count is three. Um, Randy Orton had successful back surgery. Um, you know, I feel like the back surgery is maybe more of a wrestler killer than the neck surgeries at this at this point. Could we see Randy Orton back, or is it time to call it for him? You know, them damn coffin drops finally coughed up with him. Get it? 
confidence. Anyway. Um, <laughs> yes. Right? Oh, we're talking about Randy Orton. Oh, man. I thought she was man. Well, Randy. Oh, gosh. See, that's what happens when you're offline. Anyways, Randy. Yeah. I wouldn't. Yeah, it's about that time. It's been about like, 20 years. So. And when you think about it, the back takes the most. I mean, I would think the back, the upper back. The bottom, pretty much the whole back takes everything, right? Because that's the biggest surface area, so. And think of him, and everybody thinks of him as the most durable guy, like, or the most consistent guy, because everybody else was gone, and he's there, so the body is tending to take its toll, so. Um, Would I like to see Randy back? Yes. But not at the detriment of his back, right? Right. Well, it seems like another guy that's finished, um, not because injury, but CM Punk. Um, it says, it's reported, you know, rumor and innuendo, whatever you want to call it, um, that he's more or less done with AEW. He's just waiting for them to call it. Um, he is still under contract. He is still getting paid by them. Um, he's waiting for them to release him. I don't know what AEW is going to do. What should AEW do in this predicament? Do you try to get CM Punk to negotiate? Do you try? Do you just give him what he wants? What do you do at this point? Um, he can't go back. He he can't go back. He can't. So that's one. And two, the rumor is that they're holding him until after, until after WrestleMania season because the one rumor was that he was an entrant in the Royal Rumble, which I doubt. I just think he's just soured on wrestling now at this point. It, it, if to me, like I said, he was better off. He, he was better off just staying away. But now he's back and it's tarnished whatever myth of, of what he had. I mean, Hulk is Beowulf at this point. But, I mean, just wait on AEW. I mean, it ain't like he's going to go to Ring of Honor or Impact or New Japan, or WWE, so it doesn't matter. I mean, he can. He can, but based on the landscape, would he? I mean, WWE is ran by the one person he hated. Now. I mean, all worlds lead back to WWE. I mean, we didn't think Bruno San Martino or the Ultimate Warrior would come back to WWE. They did. And who was the guy that orchestrated that? It was Triple H. So, yeah, but, that was, but those, were, those were two people that Triple H really didn't have beef with. This is a person he personally has beef with. True. But it, it is it is easy to tell the rub, rub things over when you ain't involved in it, but it's a whole different animal for you to put your ego aside. Now, what could he? I'm not going to knock it, but it seems highly unlikely. I could make the argument that he could try, and he would try. If he knew that it would be good for business. What, what business would it be good for? Because Punk would mess around and be like, I want to come back and kill the bloodline. <laughs> no, I mean, the, the pitch is go into the Hall of Fame, wrestle Stone Cold. Cold. That's what I feel. No. No. Go into the Hall of Fame, main event WrestleMania. That's Punk's MO. Main event at WrestleMania for the title. Win it. Go into the Hall of Fame, drop it the next night. I feel like that's Punk's MO. 
Um, and I don't think that the well, obviously WWE wouldn't want to do that. Um, but you know, I feel like if you say, "Hey, Stone Cold Steve Austin is interested in wrestling you at WrestleMania main event of Night One," will give you X amount of dollars. You want to do it? I don't see why he wouldn't. If it's a, especially if it's just a one-off, and treat it as a one-off. And whatever happens after that, happens. They use that shot in the chamber for Kevin Owens, homie. It's a wrap. Uh, not true. I mean, Stone Cold said that he would he would be interested if to do another match, and that he would uh, if it was the right time, right place, right. No, but he do it. He's just waiting for the call. So, and I can't imagine Stone Cold won't be interested in fighting CM Punk as well. It, the thing of it is, yeah, but, but, uh, this has always just been a dream match between CM Punk and Stone Cold. A fantasy. But, in 2022, going into 2023, there is literally, this is literally the biggest opportunity um, that this could actually take place. It could actually happen if everything goes right. Y'all yeah, said the same thing about Taker and Sting, and look what y'all, look what y'all ended up with. Yeah, because Seth Rollins... Oh. Said, Basically, crippled Sting months before WrestleMania. Sting crippled Sting. So Rollins being crippled Sting. Buckle bomb broke his back. And and Sting admitted he didn't tuck his chin in. So whose fault is that? All right. Um. I think that will conclude the news for uh, this week. And uh, a quick word from our sponsors. Hey guys, this is Brutal Bob Evans from Hangs with Bob Seminars and TheWrestleLife.com. And you are listening to Wrestling with Entertainment, one of my favorite podcasts in the whole wide world. Hey folks, this is The Colossal Mike Law and you are listening to Wrestling With Entertainment. Enjoy the show. Support these guys. We appreciate it very much. We'll see you at ringside.